Okay, if you remember from the last video, this plug we made to go in the end of the part to support it on the tailstock and the 3 8 pin that would line up with the hole to orient the plug. It's a nice close fit in the bore to hold the concentricity good on the OD. The first tool, a roughing tool, just to rough this uh, OD down um, about the size, well, the end will be about the size of that plug when it's roughed down. These um, feeds and speeds are, are uh, really for ink and L, so I realize it's turning too slow for the aluminum, so that's why the shavings don't look right coming off the tool in some of the video. I overrode the speed up 150%, but that's as fast as my machine can go on the override. I don't really like to make a special program for this aluminum setup piece. I like to use the real program because it, it, if you forget to change a feed and speed of something and you're, and you're going into the ink canal, you could damage the tool or even break some expensive tooling. So I prefer to run the actual program I intend to run when I do an aluminum setup piece. So that's, that's why it's running kind of slow for the aluminum in the video. I sped up quite a bit of this, of course. I'm liking that OD has a lot of different diameters there. You can't see them because they're very slight changes, but there's about three or four different diameters that have to be held to a two thousandths tolerance on that OD. So I have to kind of check a bunch of times on there. Just touching off this half inch end mill. I'm roughing out this um, bigger groove in the OD like this because there's going to be some holes that intersect the, the groove. I didn't put them in the aluminum because I the tooling, I had problems with the tooling getting what I needed so to move on with the job I just didn't put those two holes, or there were actually four holes intersecting that groove. But if I was to rough in there with turning tools in the ink canal it would break the tip of the tool from the intermittent cut of the holes so I roughed that with the half inch end mill. It's important when you mill like that to stay off center so that you're cutting with the edge of the tool and not the center because if you're if you stay right on center line when you do a a mill a wrapped milling like that it it will be pushing up into the face of the end mill and it could uh, cause problems or even load up the end of the end mill so you, you have to stay off half the diameter of the end mill off the center depending on which direction you're rotating it's just roughing out some shallower grooves and finishing the roughing on that on the deeper groove there with a 35 degree diamond 30 thousandths tip radius uh, VNMG insert. This is a rough grooving tool. Like I say, you see those shavings don't look quite right in the aluminum because the feeds and speeds are wrong for aluminum. So the rough grooving tool, the eighth inch wide. Um, tool flow top notch insert. It's going to rough these out. I'm going to use a separate roughing tool on the grooving from the finish tool because of the ink canal material. It, it would put less load on the finishing tool. Here's the finish OD tool. Um, BBMT insert, 30 thousandths tip radius. Finishing those grooves and then rotating the tool 180 and turning back the other direction. You kind of have to be careful to match the offsets of this. That's why I'm, I measure it once here and then I have to rerun the tool and adjust the offsets so that they both match. There's all these, all these grooves here, not the big one in the middle, but the shallower ones have a 2000s tolerance on the OD. And they have to be um, well, it, it's going to have to be good, of course. It also finishes that deeper groove as well. I'm going to remeasure the grooves, make sure they're the right 
diameters. Try to get the aluminum setup piece correct to the dimensions. This is the finished grooving tool because if you have an error in the program and if you just machine the thing and, and to test the program that would be fine but if you have some kind of a numbers off in the program for some weird reason although I'm programming from their CAD model so it should be pretty close uh, you have to machine the setup piece to dimension so that you can see you know you might have a problem with with uh, something being off in the program if you don't so this is a finished grooving tool that's Sandvik uh, 156 thousandths wide grooving tool here check the diameters of the grooves and that was the fin that was the turning on that end of the part now this end gets turned down smaller in di or the middle I should say in reality if you remember the CAD model from the last video and so I'm turning this down to the smaller diameter. First you rough off the major stock off the OD straight down. Then I gotta turn a groove, back turn, a groove or recess to be able to get that CNMG insert in there and clear the tool. So that's what it's doing here. This is a, again the rough VNMG insert that we used on the grooves. It's taking very shallow cuts because in Inconel that you would just bust the tip off the insert if you try to get too aggressive with that tool. Now you can see why I needed that clearance groove to get this tool in to finish roughing the the smaller OD down to size, well it's down to the rough size. And then uh, come back with the finishing uh, a BBMT insert same one we used before on the grooves and the OD of the, the bigger diameter, the tailstock end. The beauty of this machine is you can turn both directions with the same tool just by rotating it. And you run two different offsets and you can adjust them to match to each other very nicely. So that's the finished turn of the smaller diameter and the taper there. And then this is a, a Tungaloi feed mill for just roughing off the flats. There's going to be flats on here where this big slot through the middle of the part is. So I'm just roughing off this stock here with the feed mill. Here again, and this is programmed for Inconel. This could go a lot faster in aluminum, but in uh, Inconel, this has to be quite a bit slower. Although I've got it overridden, like I said, the 150 percent. But and and this is also the video is sped up 10 times faster. This is an inch and 3 16 drill to drill a clearance hole to start the plunge mill cutter. I'm going to try to use a plunge milling cutter, which I'm touching off here to um, rough out this. Uh, this big slot down the middle of the part. I've never used a plunge mill on Inconel before, so this is going to be a little bit of a learning experience to see how this works. Um, it, this is a shot I tried to get from underneath, if you could see the cuts that the plunge mill is taking. It's kind of hard to get the lighting right for that shot. So it's stepping over roughly about 3 16 of an inch per pass, or per hole, drilled hole, I guess you might say. And um, we're going to see how this works. If this works and is consistent, it'll be a lot faster than roughing it with an end mill, like, you know, from the side. In this video, I don't have the finished cuts of this slot or, or any of this details down at this end of the part. I kind of ran out of time and I wanted to get a video out for this week. So here's a feed mill, a Niskar one inch diameter feed mill. It's going to rough off this, um, there's some radiuses on the end of the slot that kind of blend in. It's kind of like a full radius that blends into the end of the slot. 
And this is just the roughing cuts for that. Here's a shot from underneath of that feed milling cutter. So there's the part up to this point. I'll have to wait for the next video to get to the finishing operations of that slot and everything. Just roughed out right now. So if this is your first video, please subscribe. And to all the others, thanks for watching.